Hello, everybody. I am Brother Luke. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure, also known as CES. So uh, tonight we're continuing the study of the book of Galatians. Uh, we are in uh, chapter 5. I think we're in verse 11 tonight. So get your Bibles ready and we'll start in just a minute. Uh, let's say hello to the congregation. Can we start with the untwisted sister, Sister Renee? Hey there, beloved saints. Good to be with you tonight on the Bible study. I really love this study because I always learn from all of you guys, including the chat room. So I'm grateful to be here. Yeah, amen. Well, isn't that wonderful? I mean, I, I, I'm happy that I, I studied the Bible now for almost 34 years. And I still learn from everybody here and as you said in the chat room and uh, all these these group discussions i'm continuing to learn from others uh that's the beautiful thing about this bible is it 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 it's inexhaustive you, you can it doesn't ever come to an end where you you really know it all uh brother cripps why don't you say hello yeah that i would add to that it's the living word of god that's why it, it we keep learning from it we'll continue to learn from it and I also would, would add that I have learned uh, a lot more from these uh, studies with, with you guys than I do with my own uh, uh, personal or solo uh, Bible reading. Um, doesn't mean that I haven't learned things. Definitely God has revealed some things to me, but I just have learned so much from this. So um, I'm really uh, uh, grateful to be here. Uh, I think it's a, uh, uh, Ben and I were texting earlier and I had thought we had finished Galatians, but I'm glad that I was wrong. We, uh, discovered that we hadn't gone over, uh, Galatians six. I think it's a timely scripture. I think there's a lot of good stuff in here. So I'm excited to, uh, break into it. Yes. Amen. Uh, all right. Uh, and brother Ben, we greet the congregation. Yes, it's very good to be here again tonight. Um, likewise, I always learn so much from you guys. My growth in understanding has grown by leaps and bounds since I started uh, with this church. And even the things I disagree with, it's made me sharper and more sensitive to doctrines. And um, it's it just, it, it's really helpful because it helps make, 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 make me sharper. And, um, you know, we all say iron sharpens iron. So it's really great, again, to be with you tonight. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, well, it looks like we've got a chat room that's raring to go, and uh, uh, I guess I'll share something with the congregation that I, we were talking about before we went live, and it's probably an important point to, you know, repeat um, uh, as often as we, uh, yeah, as necessary, but um, obviously we, we, we say that we are united on the core doctrines, and we are free on the non-essential doctrines and on all doctrines, all discussions, we discuss it with charity, um, love. And under this discussing with charity and love, I would say that um, uh, respect, um, uh, n not getting in the flesh, uh, not condescending, um, so these are things that are, are uh, hopefully will help us better understand what it means to, uh, uh, in all things, uh, charity. Uh, disagreeing, well, I certainly welcome it. I, that's how I learn and, and uh, grow is when people disagree and sometimes they prove me wrong. <laughs> so if that's the case, I change my mind. Uh, but uh, in all of our disagreements, we, we should never be condescending and, and insulting to each other. And so if I see this, it doesn't matter who the person is. Uh, if, if you're in the chat room or even on the panel, if I see that, I certainly, I, I, I can't put up with it. I, this is something that is, the, the way that we engage with each other has to remain uh, respectful. And uh, so, <clears throat> It's always important to be reminded of that. Uh, when it comes to uh, liberty on non-essentials, um, the, the, we like to say that we believe in the cross plus nothing. And if that is the case, 
and that is the case for me, that um, we, we believe that uh, what Jesus accomplished on the cross uh, accomplished everything that's needed for my salvation, and that all I need to do is believe that he did it all, and I have salvation because of what he did for me and his promise of eternal life. So it's, it's very simple. Um, but if a person says, well, someone's not saved because um, they, they don't understand a theological point that, that, uh, that, I, that I understand, then I'm adding something to simply the cross, the cross alone. Um, it, so it, it's not just the fact that we don't add our works to, to, to the finished work of Christ. We all know it's without works. But uh, we also must insist that you, you, we don't add anything to the, the simple gospel message of the, the, the saving cross, what was accomplished on the cross. If we impose any other tests on each other, we're adding to the cross, and it's no longer the cross alone. So let's, let's be on the lookout and on guard for that kind of uh, thinking. All right. Um, Shall we get started? Anybody want to respond? Okay. Uh, I'll just say one thing, Luke. Um, yeah, I just uh, want to make the comment that if I, you know, I'm going to be moderating as well. And if I see anything that's even suggests that there's a hint of uh, trying to cause uh, trouble or stir up trouble, uh, you'll be deleted first three times, and then you'll be timed out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's go to uh, verse 11 in the KJV. It says, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. Uh, let's start with Sister Renee. Yeah, I really um, like this verse because you can replace circumcision with anything uh, because... It, it, in this particular case, they were coming up behind him and saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law of Moses, right? And he's saying, stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free and be not in, again entangled in the yoke of bondage. So this is about being under the bondage of law, not just to be saved, but to continue in your growth after salvation. Why would you go back to that? Um, and so he mentions here, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? then is the offense of the cross. If he would just add, you can replace circumcision with anything. If he would add one work that man could glory in, the cross would not be so offensive. The message of the cross is offensive because it makes the person helpless and they have to rely only on uh, in what Jesus has done. Uh, and they can't glory in anything. The work for salvation was done by Christ, but that is offensive to the religious. That's why you'll hear people say, well, no, no, you got to be circumcised. You got to keep his commandments. See, they, they've got to feel like they did something to contribute. So Paul here is saying, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross cease. So if he were to add that circumcision is necessary, people wouldn't be coming against the message so much because they could glory in at least something. They could take credit for something they've done. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Um, let's look at this in the um, uh, Amplified. Uh, Brother Cripps, it says, But as for me, brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, as I had done before I met Christ, and as some accuse me of doing now as necessary for salvation, why am I still being persecuted by Jews? In that case, the stumbling block of the cross uh, to unbelieving Jews has been abolished. Still confusing. <laughs> um, I, I really, I really don't know. Uh, I think Renee did a good, did a good job explaining, but I don't know. I, I think he's saying, that he okay he's he's not preaching circumcision uh he's preaching grace he's preaching the cross and it's a stumbling block to the unbelieving jews why is he still why is he still under persecution i think he's under persecution because 
they're wanting people to go back under law and he's wanting people to go under grace as he said this whole this whole chapter but this is a uh, confusing verse to me brother luke mm -hmm. I think also the way he words it can be confusing i think that the the issue here is that some people are claiming that paul does preach you must be circumcised right uh, like when he was a, a pharisee because you know uh and so well if i'm doing that then why are the Jews still persecute me? If I'm really out there preaching this circumcision that they claim that you guys must do because I also support it, then why do the Jews still persecute me? Then the message of the cross wouldn't offend them if I was really preaching it for salvation. You know, but I think somebody came up behind them and said, no, 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 we're, we're telling you this because Paul, Paul promotes it too. Right. And I think that's why it's confusing the way it's worded. You're you're right, Jason, because it's like if I yet preach, if I am preaching circumcision, then right. why are the Jews still accusing me? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly it. It's yeah. on the and the Amplified doesn't doesn't really uh, line it up either very well. Well, uh, let me read it again, the Amplified, and then. Um, uh, look at the footnote. It says, but as for me, brothers, if I am still preaching circumcision, uh, as I had done before I met Christ, and as some uh, accuse me of doing now as necessary for salvation, why am I still being persecuted by Jews? In that case, the stumbling block of the cross uh, to unbelieving Jews has been abolished. Uh, so, you know, it never dawned on me before, uh, you know, even until I actually did a study and it, I taught on the book of Galatians. And then that's when you really stop and try to think about each one of these verses very deeply, I think. But uh, this verse here, uh, it really surprised me. And you're confused by a crypt, so it's, uh, it's, it is confusing, and, but it's shocking to me because it seems to me of all the accusations against Paul that he's... Uh, uh, antinomian. He's against the law. He's uh, against uh, uh, not only he doesn't want the uh, Gentiles to convert to Judaism and practice it, but he doesn't even want the Jewish believers to continue practicing. He wants them to leave Judaism behind. And, and yet, some people are accusing him of uh, preaching that, like the Judaizers are doing, that uh, that uh, circumstances is necessary for salvation apparently uh that's shocking but it just shows you the extent of the lies that people will say about someone um I'll, here's a footnote um in the uh, nabre for verse 11 it says preaching circumcision this could refer to paul's pre-christian period possibly as a missionary for judaism more probably it arose as a charge from opponents based on perhaps the story in Acts 16, 1 through 3, that Paul had circumcised Timothy on account of the Jews. Unlike the Gentile Titus in Galatians 2, verse 3, Timothy was the son of a Jewish mother, the stumbling block of the cross. Uh, well, does that help anybody? Yes, I, I still think it's... Uh, Judaizers coming in trying to change it and they're saying no 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 Paul supports this also and Paul's saying no I'm telling you to stand in your liberty and if I did teach that why do the Jews still persecute me mm -hmm. yeah they should leave them alone now right yeah yeah, yeah. That point? yep yeah. that's because that doesn't really I don't know well, you know, the more we study the, the Pauline epistles and uh, we, we, we really focus on all of the accusations against Paul, uh, every time I get into that subject, I identify with Paul because we seem to be going through the same kinds of charges against us. And, and some of them are so absurd. And this is absurd to, to accuse Paul of teaching circumcisions required for salvation. That's the exact opposite of what he said. Right. Has anybody ever accused you of teaching something the opposite of what you actually teach? No, but, I, but I, what I think happened here is they know Paul doesn't teach it, but the false teachers came in behind him and they're saying, no, Paul didn't tell us we had to do that. And they're claiming on Paul's behalf 
Oh, he, yeah, yeah, he believes in this. He supports this. He teaches it. And so they've come behind him and told the congregation this. And he's he's verifying, no, I want you to remain free. Uh, it, circumcision doesn't avail anything. And that if that were true, what they're telling you about me, if I did teach circumcision as part of the covenant, uh, then why do they still come against me? Why is the message of the cross still offensive to them? Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, we do. Uh, and I want to mention, Brother Luke, every time a false prophet, a false teacher comes up behind Paul, do, they, do the false teachers promote sin all you want? No, they promote law. It's always works. It's righteous works. It's good works. It sounds right to man. It's godly, except it can't save. But every false teacher preaches exactly what they accuse us of not teaching. You know, we just, we do teach it. We just say that's after you're saved. But every false teacher there, there, there was never a false prophet that came in and said, oh, go and sin more because grace is uh, grace will abound. But that's what Paul's accused of, of preaching. But the false teachers are preaching law, legalism, every one of them. Mm -hmm. We're not warned of, of preachers coming in and, and promoting sin because nobody would buy it. Mm -hmm. We're warned of of what sounds right to man. Mm -hmm. Amen. Religious works. Yeah, they wouldn't buy it. You're right, Renee. If they came in and said, "Yeah, just live whatever way you want." Yeah. 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 So those aren't the false teachers we're warned about. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, brother. Those Chris, are an easier yeah. spot. Sorry, brother Luke. Those are the the people that come out and 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 say, "Oh yeah." You, you know, like the the new age Jesus believers, for instance, those are easy to spot. They're not even pretending. This is like, oh yeah, just you know, do whatever you want. You know, have orgies and whatever it doesn't matter. Those are easy to spot. It, it's not as close to the truth. All right, brother Cripps. Uh, when I read this next verse to you, uh, I want you to put both hands on your chairs uh, and, and get a, a tight uh, get a tight grip. Okay. Okay. You right. Mm -hmm. Verse twelve. I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. <laughs> ah, well, <laughs> well, they were talking about circumcision, but that's that's not referring to here, fortunately. Um, He's, he's just saying that people, the Jude, Judaizers, which I always have a problem saying, which I, I, I talk for a living, but um, the Jude, uh, Ju, Judaizers, there we go, Judaizers, thank you. Um, he wishes that they were cut off and they wouldn't trouble them anymore, because this is what Paul's having to do, is come back and get everyone back in line all the time and write these uh, uh, letters to them, trying to set them straight, because they keep going astray and going back, you know, they won't leave Paul's churches alone, is what it sounds like to me. So he's just saying in verse 12, I wish they were just cut off. Those that trouble you, just wish they were done. There was an end of them. They weren't around. Whatever. Whatever way you want to put it. Mm hmm. All right. Well, it's commonly interpreted to be uh, interpreted. Judaizers. <laughs> <laughs> Judaizers. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Judaizers. <laughs> it's commonly interpreted uh, uh, quite more extremely and harshly. Uh, let's see what Sister Renee has to say about it. Yeah, the I'm with Jason. I think that's literally what it means. I wish they had no access to you. No. But the fact that he mentioned circumcision in the pr prior verse, it almost sounds like, okay, they want to say, I'm preaching that you need to cut some of your foreskin off. I wish they were cut off. Yeah. It would trouble you. You know, it's almost like a uh, a play on words. Yeah. You know, uh, could be referencing uh, cutting, you know, because of the earlier verse. That might be why he chose that wording. You he's know, almost, he's almost in the sandbox, Renee. Right. <laughs> He's almost getting in the sandbox. Right. Yeah, that flesh comes out, and you're like a kid, you're right. like not an adult anymore. <laughs> you want, they want me to teach to cut off? I wish they were cut off. Yep. 
So maybe there's a little play on words there. I can't, I can't be certain. I've heard people even interpret it worse than that, you know, uh, uh, but I, I won't go there. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it means exactly what you said, Jason, that they had no more access to him and that he's just using those words because of the, the it's a play on words. Well, what, um, what I'm referring to as uh, an extreme translation, uh, I'm not saying it's extreme because it's, uh, it's rare and radical and nobody believes it, but it's extreme in the sense that, uh, wow, it's, it's actually quite horrible and, and, and frightening that the, the thought of it, that extreme in that sense. But it's not really extreme in terms of uh, the, the, the theologians as a whole. I, I think you'll see as we, let's look at it in the first, the Amplified. Um, Amplified, verse 11 says, um, I mean 12, it says, I wish that those who are troubling you by teaching that circumcision is necessary for salvation would even go all the way and castrate themselves. So this is, uh, th th there's no confusion. We, it's, no one can misunderstand in this translation what they're conveying. Uh, it's certainly different than just, you know, you know uh, separating from someone, not having anything to do with them. Um, so that's the way that the Amplified says, says it. Let, let's look at the NIBRE footnote uh, for verse 12. It says, uh, a sarcastic half wish that their knife would go beyond mere circumcision. Um, it says Philippians 3, 2, what's that? Against legalist teachers, beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of, I don't know what that has to do with it. Um, all right, uh, let's see if the uh, Young's literal has anything to help, help us. Oh, even they would cut themselves off who are unsettling you. They, so in other words, being cut off is not us saying, okay, we're disassociating from you. This is saying they would cut themselves off. Um, so I, I can see how they could take the literal translation and expand it. Uh, Let's read one last time here in the NAPRE. Would that those who are upsetting you might also castrate themselves? So you can see that uh, I'd say that probably the vast majority of translations will take it a step further and actually use the word castrate. So it is a it is the common uh, uh, way of, of understanding the verse, uh, even even though it seems crazy. But maybe Paul is just being dramatic. And, you know, <laughs> quite dramatic. All right. You want to say anything more? Yeah, it's kind of like they want you to clip some of it. I wish they just go cut all theirs and get it over with. More yeah. more than the tip. Yeah. 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 Castrate and then don't eat reproduce. We don't want those people reproducing either. <laughs> Too late. Too late. Thank you, guys. All right. Um, Let's go to the next verse, then. There's not much we can say about that except express our shock. Oh, Paul, how could you say such a thing? Paul in the sandbox. <laughs> now I'm going to be on Paul's bad side. <laughs> oh, All right, KJV verse 13 says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Uh, only uh, use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another. Mm. Yeah, this is one of my favorite verses Yeah, because this is a perfect example when the people come and say, oh, it's a license of sin. What they're really saying is because you're secure in Christ and Jesus did all the work, it's a free gift and none of how you're living is saving you. Yes. They don't like that because they want it to count that they're being good now. And it's clear that that's not doing it. We are free. But, but don't use that freedom to serve evil. You know, he tells us before, you're not a debtor to your flesh. You're a debtor to God. He's the one that saved you and gave you eternal life. Why would you go backwards? And it's, it's the perfect example here that, yes, you are free. You are not under bondage. Uh, you're not saved by your works. But don't use your freedom. 
uh, and for evil purposes. You know, it, it's clear here you are free. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Don't use the fact that you're free and secure in Christ for an occasion to your flesh, but by love serve one another. That's your purpose. Mm -hmm. we're, we're called to our purpose to be who we are, who God says we are in Christ. So it's it's a great verse to use. Say, see, we are. We are free, but we're told not to use our liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Paul says, shall we sin so that grace may abound? God forbid. How can we be dead to sin, live anymore there? And we died. We were the law. We're dead to the law. We're dead to sin. We're supposed to be alive unto Christ. And any saved person should understand that. That's why Amen. carnal man's understanding to to beat up true saints that trust only in the shed blood of Jesus. Mm. You know the Muslims have the same objection. Mm. Catholics do too. You have the same objection to the gospel. Well, that's not fair. You can just do whatever. You, they don't get it. They they can't get it. And we can't make them see. But this is a great verse for it. You have been called into liberty. Only use not that liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Wow. All right. Let's look at it in the Amplified, Brother Cripps. It says, uh, uh, for you, my brothers, were called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom become an opportunity for the sinful nature. That is worldliness, selfishness. But through love, serve and seek the best for one another. Yeah. It makes no sense uh, to do that. Uh, I, while Renee was talking, she did a great job explaining. I can't really add much more than that, but I'll, I'll say that while she was talking, I was thinking about uh, uh, an actual slave being set free. And then what they do once they're free, they're, they're a free man now. They're no longer a slave. What they do is they go back to the people that are, that are still slaves and taunt them and say, ah, you're a slave, blah, blah, blah. You know, like they have the liberty and they're going back and they're treating other people like this. Um, to me, it's it's the same thing. If we're given liberty, we understand what liberty is, and someone else doesn't understand it. They're still in bondage to eat not, touch not, or you know, all, all that stuff. Whatever whatever it is that they don't have liberty in. Let's say it's alcohol. Let's say uh, we know that this just for an example, um, someone that professes to be a believer, they think that if you touch any alcohol, you're going straight to hell. They're wrong. They're wrong about that. But for you to to go and drink in front of them or uh, taunt it. And, and Paul's addressed this many, many times. Don't use, don't use our liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Um, and then this last part, but by love serve one another. That's how we deal with it. Uh, if someone's uh, in bondage to something else, we treat them with love, uh, hoping that when they see the love, they'll see the Holy Spirit's work in your life and they'll turn their eyes to him. We're supposed to be light and salt to the world. And it's frustrating to me when I'm not seeing that. You're muted. It's, uh, it's not only frustrating, uh, it's um, tragic because uh, I, I made a video, I think it was titled uh, Top Five Reasons People Reject Christianity. Yeah. Uh, and, and of course, part of it is people observe Christians and uh, uh, we we are so it's like Gandhi phrased it this way. He says, uh, uh, I, "I love your Christ, but uh, your you Christians are so unChristlike." Um, obviously, uh, we're supposed to be Christlike. We're supposed to be uh, a renew creature. We're supposed yep. to be you know, walk by the Spirit and and uh, being transformed, renewed, and yep. uh, and, and yet uh, uh, some of these people probably are not believers. But I think there's a lot of real believers that are are very disappointing. The way that they are, they're not ambassadors. The way that we would hope. Yeah. Of course, you know, I'm sure I miss the mark sometimes. We, nobody's perfect at that. But but some people, it is so obvious contradiction that uh, they're saying they have faith in Christ, and yet the world looks at that and says, "Well, I never want to be a Christian if that's what what is." Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let me. Uh, let me look at that verse uh, 13 uh, in uh, if a footnote on it. Uh, in the NABRE, it says, uh, 
uh, in, in light of another reminder of the freedom of the gospel, Paul elaborates on what believers are called to do and be. They fulfill the law by love of, of neighbor. Well, and this is reminding me here when it says believers, and then when in the NABRE it says believers, and then uh, in the Amplified it says brethren. And we've talked about this before, but I, I think it's uh, important to keep mentioning this, that this is obviously a letter that's written to a congregation of believers, saved people, indwelled with the Holy Spirit, who... Uh, uh, Unfortunately, I uh, got led astray. It's like a, it's like a person that uh, comes to faith today uh, and then someone comes into their congregation or they happen to be searching for a local church and they join a church and that church is preaching the Judaizers message that, that other things are required besides faith, whether it's water baptism and changing your life or circumcision and follow the laws of Moses. Um, people, uh, when, when they're babes particularly, and these are babes, they, they haven't been saved that long, so uh, it's easy for them to be influenced and by these false teachers. And that's really what's going on in this whole book of Galatians. And it should be obvious to everybody. The uh, uh, But the fact that he says brethren again here, and the other translations refer to it as believers. So we're talking to believers who, uh, unfortunately, have gone into apostasy. Um, all right, let's go to the, anybody want to say more before we go to 14? All right. Uh, in, the NA, uh, in the Amplified, uh, whose turn is it to go first, Renee or Cripps? It's me. All right, Cripps. Verse 14 in the KJV says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. So uh, I've looked ahead a little bit to the next verse, and he mentions the law of Christ to fill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? Um, we all know it. It's, it's love God with everything, with our whole heart. That's a paraphrase, of course, not a direct quote. And love your neighbor as yourself. So he's saying in this verse, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, you know that's that's what that's what Jesus said, and all the laws and the prophets are are fulfilled in this. People still don't understand that; they get it all all twisted. Um, but when Jesus came, he fulfilled the law and the prophets. He did, and he said, I'll "Give you these two commandments. One is not one is an old one. It's not a new one. It's an old one. Uh, love God with everything. Love your neighbors yourself." So that's what he's referring to, I believe. Here, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. It's very clear. So if we do that, if we do that, then uh, it's fulfilled. It, we're, we're, uh, Jesus fulfilled it, but we're doing what Jesus told us to do. We're following Christ's commandment. Christ's commandment isn't just as we've talked about. It isn't like many people think. It's not like the Ten Commandments. We're, especially uh, for Gentiles, we're not under the law. We are under Christ's law. If we're, if we're his children, we're under this law here. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It, it's super clear. So if if we're not doing that, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, sister. Sorry, we're having dog crisis here, you guys. I was watch, watching it walk around in the background. I didn't see a crisis. <laughs> uh, you made a good point about not using our liberty uh, and in front of others. Mm -hmm. But I love serving one another. It was a good point, Crips. And here's the thing. Paul's saying they want to come in and preach law to save. But we fulfill the law when we love one another. We mm -hmm. are in freedom. The law can't save us. But it even says in, I think it's Romans, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. And what is the true heart of the law? Love. That's, that's the point. And so you don't need the bondage of law for us to to live godly mm -hmm. that's that's the whole point of this the law you're looking back to dead letter instead of what these shadows meant and if you just let christ live in you it'll work itself out uh when it says for all the law is fulfilled in one word even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor at thyself so paul is saying these people want to come and push law on you but you're not in bondage of the law 
But the true righteousness of the law, the true meaning of the law is love. And we have that ability in us because the Holy Spirit dwells in us. We don't yeah. need this law. Yeah. Why do you think it's so hard, Renee? Why do you think it's so hard for people to see if, uh, if they're not living in that love? Uh, they they have this sense of righteousness. Yeah. Uh, and they, they don't understand God's standard of perfection mm -hmm. and that even the thoughts and intents of our hearts fail him all the time. Yep. So they think that as long as they don't do the actual uh, working of it, you know, if you don't cheat on your wife, then right. you're, you know, you're not an adulterer, even, even though you are in your heart. Right. And they, they have not been made guilty by this law. It just hasn't shown them their guilt. And so it, it, they can't even grow if they are saved because they're always looking back to this and the strength of sin is the law. It's the don't do this and do that and self-focus that keeps us wrapped up in it mm -hmm. instead of just saying, okay, I'm right with God because of what Christ did. And I'm just going to do what the spirit in me tells. Amen. And that is something we get, we hear better and better. And I know for me, my whole attitude and opinions about what's right and wrong has changed since I've been saved. And it goes far beyond what's written in the law. I mean, uh, you would probably say, "Up, oh, yep, she she keeps God's commandments," but in my heart, I believe we should even go beyond. Not only should we not steal, but we should give more when someone's in need. Like we should go above and beyond what the law even demands. Yes, you know. Yeah. So, um, I, I, they just I can't see it. I mean, it says that if the gospel be hid, it be hid to them that are lost. Yeah. They can't. They just can't see it until God shows it to them. Amen. Self-righteous blinds people. Pride too. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It's almost the same thing. Isn't it? All right. Yeah, it is. Pride and self-righteousness. Spiritual pride is what it is. Yeah. All right. I'm going to read it. 14 in the Amplified. It says, for the whole law uh, concerning human relationships is fulfilled in one precept. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That is, you shall have an unselfish concern for others and do things for their benefit. Mm. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing that uh, amazes me is uh, when you look at uh, the Mosaic laws, you have 10 that are seem pretty simple to understand that God wrote in stone with his own finger. Uh, um, and then you have... Uh, I guess 603 other, there's 613 total. So there'll be 603 additional laws that Moses recorded on parchment, I guess. And uh, uh, these are really quite detailed and intricate. Uh, it's a huge legal system that they are under. Um, and then Jesus comes along and says, I'm going to reduce it all kind of sum it all up in, in just these two things. Love God with your whole heart and mind. Uh, whole, love, your, love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, I think. And, uh, and love your neighbor as yourself. Um, so he's, he reduced it into that and said, this is all you they really need is these two, uh, these two points covers it all. Um, and yet... Can anybody here listening now, can any of us claim that we can even do these two things? Really, tell me, anybody, does anybody love God with their whole heart, mind, soul, and strength? That means there's never even one lapse, one momentary lapse where your mind is not like totally devoted and love, this absolute love for, for God. Uh, yeah, and, and, and then what about loving your neighbors yourself? being unselfish and putting your neighbor first ahead of you at all times. Have you done that? I, I fall so far short on both of these things. It's my great desire to do both. But uh, even when Jesus just simplified it as much as possible for us, it's monumental. We cannot do that. Amen. Thanks, Brother Luke. Yeah, that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. We should be striving toward that. 
but the Holy Spirit is helping us to do that. And it's only through the Holy Spirit, in my opinion, it's only through the Holy Spirit that, that we even come close. If it weren't for the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't even be anywhere close to God's perfection that he requires. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll go to the next verse. Uh, uh, in the KJV, verse uh, 15 says, um, But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Uh, whose turn is it for first? Okay. Right? 15? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he's just saying uh if you guys if you guys don't uh start putting others before yourself it, this this fighting and bickering amongst yourself is going to destroy the whole church it's going to consume the whole fellowship yeah yeah amen mm -hmm. all right let me Can't wait for this one go ahead and read it I'll, in the amplified I'll, I'll read 15 in the amplified brother it says uh but if you bite and devour one another in bickering and strife, watch out that you, along with your entire fellowship, are not consumed by one another. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this is one of the reasons why I I really love CS and came to CS because uh, all the other so-called Christian chat rooms out there, and I've and I've been around here for it's it's coming on three years. Uh, is because of the creed and because of the way that we try to treat each other. I'm not saying that anybody's perfect, uh, but generally that's the way it is. And it grieves my heart when I see this, this uh, uh, biting and devouring one another. Uh, and Paul makes it clear, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Um, so I think it's very clear in these verses uh, in, in 13, but by love serve one another. And then 14, it's talking about fulfilling the law. Thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. Bring that up again, Paul is. And then this one, if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. And so when I see it happening, it, it drives me crazy. I lose sleep over it. Uh, so uh, Paul's making it very clear the way that we're supposed to act. And as Brother Luke said, yeah, we're not perfect to do this all the time, but we should be trying to do it. We should do, we'd bend over backwards to do whatever we could, even if it's uncomfortable, uh, to make things right and to resolve things. Yeah. Well, that's, that's part, part of the reason that I made the opening statement today is that, uh, to me, as, as I see part of my responsibility in the congregation is I want to make sure that we do not... Um, uh, devolve or degrade in, in that way that we do not start uh, turning on each other and uh, uh, we, we live, lose the charity in our conversation because if we if we're going to disagree but we're going to do it in a way that's rude or condescending to uh, it's, it's bad enough to do that someone privately but to publicly condescend to, to another that kind of thing is uh, is it's not far away from totally uh, ruining everything. Everything would be ruined if we let that a little yeast spoils the whole batch, as we've discussed before. So these are the kinds of things that I feel are necessary to nip in the bud in terms of when we start getting in the flesh and we get uh, you know, our egos get involved and we we start making comments that uh, really are 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 not appropriate they're immature then i feel like i have a great responsibility to not let that get out of hand right. all right let's go to the, the next verse um, let's see in the kjv verse uh, 16 says this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh mm. brother cripps yeah, this is another good one. Just switch gears a little bit, but it's it, it, I think it ties into the same thing. Uh, we carry this. We, you've heard me talk about it several times, and I didn't come up with it. I, I think I haven't heard anyone else call it zombie, the, the, the dead flesh we carry around. 
Um, <laughs> maybe the influence of all the, the zombie genre movies and, and books and TV shows out there on me, which I'm, I'm sure nobody's celebrating. Uh, but it does represent, if you're thinking about the dead flesh, it does represent it very well and very vividly in your mind about what that is. So a uh, believer has been quickened in their spirit. Their spirit is alive. It's no longer dead. They're a former zombie, but we still carry the flesh around with us. So every day, a believer, in my opinion, every day a believer uh, has to decide whether they're going to walk in the spirit or walk in the flesh. And I think, at least looking at myself, um, I, I go, I'm, I'm not saying I'm sinless, but I go days, days and days sometimes walking in the spirit and not walking in my flesh. I make better decisions. Um, you know, I have a relationship with God. I'm talking to him. There, there are days, not sinless, but where I'm walking in the spirit and not the flesh. Then I have other times where someone uh, pulls out in front of me and almost runs me off the road and I yell at him uh, through a closed car. And then I, I know that I've jumped into my flesh. I'm not walking the spirit in those moments walking in the flesh. So I have plenty of ex examples that I'm not perfect. Um, but Paul's saying that when you walk in the spirit, you sh when walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The more we do this, the more uh, the Holy Spirit conditions us to walk in the spirit, the more practice we get, I believe, uh, the less we fulfill that lust of the flesh. That's my, my uh, experience, at least. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Sister Renee, what do you say? Yeah, the continuing thought here of Paul's is, again, the purpose of the law. There's no need for the law because if you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The law was one to show us our guilt in our flesh. Uh, and uh, he's saying here, you, you don't need the law because you have the spirit. The spirit tells us the right thing to do. It convicts us of righteousness, our right standing with God, but also the right thing to do, the righteous thing to do. And so what I find interesting is all these people claiming the flesh is somehow perfected now. And if we deny that there is a battle, you can't fight a battle that you don't think exists. Right. People that they think they got it all under control now. No, he's talking about before he was saved. He's still carnal. He's still got flesh. We are all still in the flesh. But he tells us, but ye are not in the flesh, meaning that where we have a carnal body and we still have the old nature, but we're to put off that old man and put on the new one. And that is walking in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. You now have the ability to not fulfill the lust of the flesh, whereas that's the purpose of the law. Yeah. You don't need the law. Because you have the spirit now and he tells you. Yeah. Amen. Thanks, Renee. All right. All right. Let me read that in the Amplified. It says, uh, but I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. That is, seek him and be responsive to his guidance. Mm -hmm. And then you will certainly not carry out the desire of the sinful nature, which responds impulsively without regard for God and his precepts mm -hmm. really quite good they elaborated on that yeah. Uh, yeah because because we're going to naturally instinctively because it is our nature we are going to go the sin way that's just what well, that's just we we just are we're, we're just natural born sinners <laughs> i mean it's so easy to sin and and, and unless we are conscious of the Holy Spirit. We're praying and we're, we're listening to the Holy Spirit and we're surrendering and saying, Holy Spirit, change me. And, and, and you're really open to it. Uh, we, our instincts are to resist it and go in the flesh. Uh, look at, let me read it in the NABRE translation. It says, I say then, live by the Spirit and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. So, hmm. Yeah, if we're, if we're living by the Spirit, we're certainly... That's why I made a video, uh, uh, let's stay focused on Jesus. I mean, because if you're focused on Jesus, you're not going to be thinking about sin. Your mind can only think of one thing at a time, as far as I know. That's true. And if you can only think of one thing at a time, if you don't want to think about sin and then, and then walk in sin, then uh, the best thing is think about Jesus, and you're not going to be thinking about sin. 
And, and while you're thinking about him, maybe you can listen to him and he's got something to say to you. Um, if you look at the Young's Literal, it says, and I say, in the spirit walk ye, and the desire of the flesh ye may not complete. So in other words, the desire of the flesh will be completed. The flesh will get its way unless you, you don't let it get completed by walking in the, in the spirit. I think that's a, uh, and that's the Young's literal, but I think that's really quite ob obvious in that. Um, all right, any more? No, that's good. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back to the KJV for uh, uh, verse 17. It says, um, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Wow. Sounds a little bit familiar to uh, uh, Corinthians, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it your turn, folks? Is it me or Renee? I don't remember. I don't remember. Renee? Okay. I, I don't remember. I lost track. Yeah. Go ahead, Renee, verse 17. Yeah, this is the battle we were just talking about. These people yeah. claim we don't have anymore because theirs is so perfected. If it was perfected, we wouldn't need a glorified body. Why we wouldn't need Jesus. Corruptible flesh, mm -hmm. sinful flesh. Flesh itself is sinful. It's what we inherited. Mm -hmm. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would okay mm -hmm. now if you're only in the flesh and you do not have the spirit that's why you can't be saved by the law that's the exact reason right there oh. but in the next verse he tells you that's not the case but these people that want to get it by the law they mind the things of the flesh and those in the flesh can't please god and it cannot be done through the flesh here they it wars against everything that God wants from, you know, that God thinks is righteous. Amen. Amen, Renee. You're muted, Brother Luke. It's hard. I'm trying to think about the chat room and then I forget about the that. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'll read it. Uh, verse 17 in the Amplified, Brother. It says, uh, for the sinful nature has its desire, which is opposed to the spirit. And the desire of the spirit opposes the sinful nature. For these two, the sinful nature and the spirit are in direct opposition to each other, continually in conflict, so that you as believers do not always do whatever good things you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so again, to use the, the zombie analogy, because it just works so well for me. Um, so as I said earlier, we carry that around with us. We have a quickened spirit. It's made alive through Christ. Christ is the reason why that's there. I like what Renee said, and I, I kind of blurted out and interrupted a little bit by saying, um, if, if we could do all this on our own, then God would have not needed to send his son into the world. Why would he send his own son if we could do this on our own? No. We can't do it on our own. We can't overcome the law. We can't reach his level of perfection. That's why we have the Holy Spirit, because he loves us so much and wanted to reconcile us to him. But we still, until we get our glorified bodies, we still have this uh, the, the, the flesh that we carry around with us, that zombie flesh. And uh, so Paul's saying uh, that when we continue in one, uh, it, it's contrary to the other. So the spirit against the flesh the flesh against the spirit, uh, and it prevents us. The flesh can, if we allow it, the flesh can prevent us from doing the things that the spirit craves. So my understanding is you've got a perfect, sinless, uh, spiritual part of you that God has quickened. That 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 uh, what Paul has said in other uh, in other books that that's that's the part of you that doesn't sin. Uh, so you have that desire that God has put in you not to sin and that's the spirit, then you have the desire of the flesh, which is that zombie that zombie part that we carry around with us, and they're constantly at war with each other. Hmm. 
Okay. Uh, okay, my mic is on this time. Yep. Hooray. Uh, well, there's this uh, ch chapter. What, what is that chapter in Corinthians or is it Romans? I've, am I confusing it uh, where Paul says that uh, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I don't do it. And I know what I shouldn't do. And yet I do that. And oh, wretched man that I am. And well, where is that? Um, good question. I can look it up. Renee must not be listening, or she would have already told me where it is. So, I don't well, wherever, wherever it is, this he's it's the same kind of a sentiment he's making right here. That's what it reminds me of. He's yeah, going to Romans six, or Roman he's, seven, Roman seven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's going over the same principle again right, right. here, and right. Um, it's you know, there are people that have argued uh, that saying that. Uh, that was Paul talking about before he got saved, and that makes no sense at all. Um, uh, what's what's clear to me is that Paul um, is here. He is. We many of us think he's the greatest of the apostles, and, and he is uh, an example in so many ways. And yet he confesses and confides in all of us that look, I have this ongoing struggle. Uh, with sin myself, I, uh, you know, it's it's in me, and, and it, I'm, it's a, it's a constant struggle, or it's a continuous struggle, if not constant, and uh, that's for a saved person. Uh, so I've always felt that this is very helpful when I have to talk to um, someone that's uh, preaching sinless perfection, and I say, "Well, you think you can do it? Well, you must be better than the Apostle Paul, because Paul confessed he could not do it." It's a really bad interpretation to try to say that whole section, the good, I am carnal, sold under sin. He's talking about being in a flesh body. He didn't suddenly stop being in a carnal human being with flesh. And that's what he's talking about. The battle between what the flesh wants, the members want, versus in my mind, I delight in the law of God, but my members war against me. Mm. If we deny that that's a, a struggle and say, no, we got it all in control. I don't have that flesh. I have, since I'm saved, I don't, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Nobody would ever interpret that that way. Amen. It's clear that Paul is talking about the, fl the struggle between the old man and the new man. Mm. And the sin list, you guys, when, when Paul lists that stuff, He's when it says, and they which do such things will not inherit. There, there, he, he mentions this several times. Look, this is what the unsaved will be judged on that the wrath of God is going to come on the unsaved for all of these behaviors. Yeah, not be partakers with them. Why would you, as a saint, do these wicked behaviors that you know God's wrath is going to be poured on? Why would you do that? That's not who you are anymore. It's not saying that if somebody commits one of these, they lose their salvation. Yeah. You know? Or if you do this, it means you're not going to heaven. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it's crazy. There's strife in there. So if I argue with my husband, I'm not getting to heaven, I guess. Because it means right. I'm hey, I mean, it's silly. Right. Yeah. It, to me, uh, there's a couple portions of scripture where Paul is doing this, and Jesus also does this. They give us a laundry list of sins uh, and even include all liars, even, or strife, as you said. It's just not only homosexuals and murderers, but even liars. And they, they, they give this list to, to make it pretty comprehensive mm -hmm. uh, so that pretty much anybody should be able to identify with something on that list. Uh, and they're not going to go to heaven, he says. So rather than a person realizing that uh, that's why we need Jesus, that's the point of those verses. Yeah, that's true. So you need Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead, they will interpret it that even after you have Jesus and you have your salvation, you, you're going to go to hell if you do those things. They don't, they don't understand that these are just like the laws of Moses or the impossible sayings of Jesus, the, the things that to make a person understand their, their desperate state. Yeah. All right. 
hey brother luke this seems like a good time i need i need to I, i'm trying to leave this alone i don't want to be a part of this but I, I have to ask why uh talking doctrine keeps getting timed out uh one of the comments he made was congratulating me on my wedding coming up i realize it's not part of the topic but he was uh interacting with jen in the chat and it was deleted so it's happened twice that i've that i've seen so uh he's he i haven't seen him say anything that deserves being timed out but yet it's happening so i i i was just scrolling through to see what he had said and he was just trying to help mike out he even told mike not to discuss that topic yeah this has become a problem so well uh, we, we i don't know if we should t discuss this now but i can uh, cite the reasons why uh but i'm not sure if this is the time or place well, let me say this, uh, just so that it's not the subject is not being ignored. Um, I want to feel welcome to come chat with the saints and fellowship with them, as long as there's not anything ugly being said personally to anyone. Right. Well, can that's you, what's happening. Can you uh, give me a second here? The uh, uh, on the, on the protocols uh, for the chat room, how we're supposed to be conducting our, ourselves in the chat room. Um, I, and, and what I said in the beginning of the program about being in the chat room and making comments that are condescending and rude, insulting. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that uh, I've noticed and um, obviously Ben has noticed because it seems that it's been directed to him personally, much of it. And so uh, I wanted to um, uh, remove a comment last program and, and I couldn't remove it. Because as a moderator, you, you can't you, you don't you can't remove a moderator's uh, comments. So that's why it's necessary to remove the moderator standing if someone is going to be behaving like that. I, I expect the moderator to, to solve the problems in the chat room, not to be the problem in the chat room. Sure. So if you're going to be uh, making comments that are condescending and and, and uh, Ben could provide a, a list. I'm sure he's saved saved them. Um, so I, I don't want to mention it, uh, all of them, but uh, that's that's the situation we have now. As far as what he's responding to tonight, uh, Ben will have to explain what on what grounds. But another thing we we have as a rule in the protocols is that if we trust a moderator to, um, uh, hey, we're asking a moderator to take on a job and a responsibility. And if we give them this responsibility, we're trusting them to, to do it according to the protocols. And if we disagree with one of their uh, decisions, then we're not going to publicly d do what we're doing right now. Let's, hey, challenge, uh, we should not be challenging some a moderator's decision while the program's going on. That's an actual rule in the protocol. This is something that we should be talking about after the program is over privately to ask, okay, I don't understand why he was timed out or why this was done. Could you explain it to me? Rather than confront, questioning a moderator's decision publicly, and now who's going to want to be a moderator if they make a decision and, they, and now they're going to be challenged when they do it? Mm, so that, that's how we're supposed to be uh, conducting this. But the problem really is because uh, for several programs now, I've seen comments that I thought were inappropriate and uh, um, um, unbecoming of a, 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 a mature Christian that's supposed to be a, a leader. Uh, that uh, and it was disappointing, and I I wanted to remove them, and I didn't couldn't do it. So these things are steps that have have become necessary. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, so now you know. Uh, as far as any particulars, if you want to know why Ben has has done it, maybe we can. If we're talk since we're talking about it, but we're not supposed to be airing our dirty laundry during our Bible studies, people. No. no. All right. Okay. Talk about it after. Okay. All right. Let's go to uh, verse. Um, uh, 18 in the KJV. Uh, whose turn is it? I think it's mine since, uh, yeah, Renee went last time. Okay. Well, go all the way to the end of 21 because it's a continuing sentence. All right. I'll read 18 through 21. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, 
lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have, uh, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. There it is. That's exactly what I was referring to. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. yeah. So I told you, I've already given you my answer how we should understand these things, but whose turn is it? Renee, yours? Your it's turn? Mine. Renee, Chris, it's go mine. ahead. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I was going to say when it came around to me, that's exactly what you're referring to, these lists of things uh, for sure. Now, Paul's making it very clear that, uh, the works of the flesh, and he he uh, says what they are. But in verse eighteen, but if led by the Spirit, you're not under law. So, in other words, uh, like we've discussed, if you're continuing to walk in that Spirit that God has given you, that quickened Spirit, that Spirit Man that is perfect in you, and you choose to walk in those ways, then you're not under the law. Uh, you're you're not even responding to that law. You're responding to Christ's law. If you're walking in the Spirit, you're following after the things that Christ said to do. Uh, so then he lists all these things. Um, in my understanding, uh, I'm sure it matches what Brother Luke thinks that this 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 gets twisted too. And when it comes around to Renee, I'm sure that she'll have a, a heyday with this one. Uh, but people say, see, see, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, all this stuff, wrath, witchcraft, hatred, all these things that he mentions. If you're doing any of those things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, my understanding is uh, based on the whole of scripture that, yeah, of course we shouldn't do any of these things, but are there people that have murdered that are going to heaven? Absolutely. Are there people that have gotten drunk that are going to heaven? Yes. I can go on and on with each one of these things. And I know someone personally, I've even been someone, uh, I've been drunk. I used to, I used to drink, uh, quite often. Um, I don't anymore, but that's not what saves me. What saves me is Christ alone through faith alone with nothing added. And I'm no longer one of one of these people. I think I don't know if it's this one. But he said, so, so were some of you that did these things. I'm paraphrasing what Paul said. You used to do these things. Now you don't do them anymore. Uh, we inherit the kingdom of God by believing in what Christ did, uh, uh, not by uh, the things that we do. Um, so we're we're inheriting the kingdom of God based on kingdom of God based on what Christ did, not based on what we do. Um, so then someone can make the argument, well, uh, Bill, or just some random name, Bill is a, is a drunk and he claims that he believes Christ alone through faith alone enough to add it. He's not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Well, he's going to face earthly consequences if he continues to do that. Uh, but uh, only God knows a person's heart. Uh, no matter who thinks they look at someone else and say, oh, I know him. Only God knows who they are and what their true intentions are. And that makes it difficult for us. Uh, but God knows if if uh, Bill is really saved or not. And I believe the Holy Spirit will deal with the the things that a person, if is really a child of his, he'll continue to deal with them. And it doesn't necessarily uh, mean that they won't inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So, so, Renee, that's a lot of text here to comment on. Yeah, there's a, a couple of things I want to say here. For one... Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within us. So there's one way to interpret that, that if you're doing these things and you're living in your flesh, mm -hmm. you're not inheriting the kingdom. You're, you're not walking in the peace, as it says, the temperance, the patience. You're not living in it now, for one. Uh, but he's clearly talking about the difference between flesh and spirit. And whenever he mentions flesh, he mentions the things the flesh wants, right? But we are not in the flesh. We're not judged on the flesh for salvation. Uh, he's telling us how to walk. You know, if you want these things, and he's listing, if you're being envious, you want to murder, you got hatred, that's your flesh. You shouldn't feed that. He's giving them examples of what their flesh is. You can tell you're walking in the flesh if you desire uh, revel, reveling, drunkenness, uh, murders, envying, that's your flesh. And then he goes on to tell us, but the spirit is this. Mm -hmm. so I, I think it's he's clearly just telling them how to walk in the spirit and how to determine 
which is their flesh wanting something versus what the spirit desires uh, and what the uh, evidence of that will be. If you're walking in your flesh, you're going to be manifesting this stuff. If you're walking in the spirit, you're going to be manifesting these things. And so he encourages people not to feed the flesh. And in every other verse here that's similar with the famous sin list, he's telling the saints, don't do the things the unsaved, unrighteous, unjust unbelievers do. Don't be like they are. Uh, don't do this as become a saint. And so he clearly makes a divide between the unsaved and how they're acting and how the saved shouldn't be acting like the unsaved. And so here, and it says, for they which do such things shall not inherit. Now, I think uh, he's just determining those that are still in the flesh aren't going to inherit the kingdom. And why would you want to act like people that aren't part of God's kingdom? Uh, another thing is inheriting the kingdom right now. If you're doing these things, you are not walking in the, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven that is within us. Amen. Dividing, you know, uh, the difference. Amen, Renee. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, there's a footnote here in the NABRA. Uh, it says first verses 19. Uh, through 23, it says such lists of vices and virtues uh, were common in the ancient world. Paul contrasts works of the flesh with fruit, uh, not, not works, uh, fruit of the spirit. Not law, but the spirit leads to such traits. Uh, but that's the thing that I, I guess I'll, it's worth repeating because maybe some people didn't hear me last time, but this is something that I think is you can never say too, too much. Right. And that is that these laundry lists of vices uh, and sins, uh, the lordship heresy, they, they will use these, that portion of scripture to say, see, if you don't stop doing all these things, you're, you're lost. You're, you're going to go to hell. And they don't realize that that's true unless you believe in Jesus. That's why we need to believe in Jesus. So um, it's just when you see these lists, don't let them bother you. That's the context. And that's the, that's the viewpoint, uh, the perspective you need to have about these lists. Right. Um, and some of the some of the things on the list, uh, let's let's look at it very, more carefully. Uh, actually, in the uh, I didn't read it in the Amplified, did I? I'm curious to see no. how they would phrase this. Um, Go ahead. Okay. Okay, it says, um, Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, uh, total irresponsibility or lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility. Anybody here ever get hostile sometimes? Yep. Strife. <laughs> I think I think we saw some strife tonight. Where there's strife. Perfect. Pardon me? Perfect. Not me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, jealousy. Yep. I don't know. Have you ever get jealous? I, I'm, yep. Unfortunately, I'm, I, I think I have to confess to that. Yep. Fits of anger. Um, not so much fits anymore. I have had fits of anger, but uh, you know, my anger does uh, 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 build up in me sometimes. Yeah. Disputes, disputes. Come on, we're, we're always having disputes. Oh, someone's calling me. Okay, there you go. Uh, dissensions, uh, factions, yep. that promote heresies, envy. Come mm -hmm. on, come on. It, 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 I think. We've all envied others sometimes. Uh, hopefully, we grow out of that. But but envy is so common. Uh, drunkenness, uh, not so much anymore. But I had my day. Especially my last name is Boozer, so is. You, you would expect that of me, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, it's just by the very name you would expect. It. <laughs> Riotous behavior. No, I've never been in a riot yet. Uh, I'm, I'm maybe maybe I'll be joining a riot soon. I don't know. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and other things like these. So, I mean, it really, these lists are, it's, 
it's amazing the 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 uh, how comprehensive the list is but also some of the things uh is people would think well that's a really horrible thing and yet other things seem to be so minor that everybody had, would have to confess to that come on everybody haven't we all had felt envy at some time yeah I, i'm sorry to say but yeah 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 uh, all right. I guess if there's no more, let's go to uh, uh, verse uh, 22. Wh whose turn is it now to go first? We're, we're back on track, Renee. Okay. Start. All right, Renee. Verse 22 and 23, I'll read together. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such things. I mean, as against such, there is no law. Yeah, against Paul's purpose is like, why do they keep bringing you back under the bondage of the law? Yeah. If you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, which are all these terrible things that the law is trying to prevent you from doing, but because you're in the flesh, it won't work. But if you walk in the spirit, this is what you'll, this is what you'll uh, be putting out in the world. By the way, there's no law against it. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, the law is, it can't do anything to help you grow or uh, make you a more uh, uh, righteous person and in, in, uh, superficially righteous, I mean. Um, right. And so when it says, but, but, because it gives all the stuff your flesh wants, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. So there, there's no point in bringing in the law. Because if you're walking in the spirit, this is what you're going to manifest. And the law surely is not against manifesting those things. No. So the law is just pointless in your walk or in regards to salvation. Hmm. Amen, Renee. Good point. You're muted, Brother Luke. All right. Thank you for that gentle reminder, brother. Appreciate it. Sure. Uh, the, the, those two verses uh, probably are some of the most memorized verses we find in the Bible. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Have uh, Have you known anybody, or maybe you're one, who's memorized the, the verses on the fruit of the Spirit? I, ha I have. I have. Uh, this is not bragging, but I went to a private Christian school, and I memorized this in the second grade. I've never forgotten it. I'm grateful for that, for that reason. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to read it in the Amplified, and then I'd like you to expound on each of these points. Give us your thoughts on each of these uh, fruits here. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit, that is the result of his presence within us, mm. um, is love, that is unselfish concern for others, joy, that's an inner peace, uh, uh, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. Ooh, wow. Kind, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Mm. Right. Wow, the Amplified did a really good job on this one, I, I, I think, in my opinion. Um, so I, I think we've talked about this before, and I think I've even said it recently. These, these fruits... This came up, I, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, but the fruits came up. And um, these are fruits that God gives you. Uh, uh, God is the vine, we are the branches. Remember that song? I don't know, Brother Luke, I don't remember if you went to Sunday school or not. Uh, but this, uh, I am the vine, ye are the branches, banner over us is love. Remember that song? Anyway, we sang that in children's church. <laughs> Um, but he's the vine, we're the branches. So uh, we do not produce fruit on our own. It's very important to understand that. We do not manifest fruit from us. We're not capable of it. So it's all a gift from God. The fruit of the spirit, the result of his presence within us. That's that spirit that if we have in it, these are some of the fruits that should come. He mentions love first, which is extremely important, unselfish concern for others. Uh, joy, inner peace. Now, this joy uh, in John, and I, I, if I wish that I had prepared and, and brought that uh, verse up, 
But John says, even the joy that we have is Christ's joy. It's not our joy. I, I find that very, very comforting that I don't have to depend on my own joy, that Christ gives it to me, the joy that I have, joy unspeakable. Uh, it's incredible and amazing, and it's his joy. It's not my, my, my joy. I'm not capable of uh, uh, bringing that to myself. I can pretend I'm joyful, uh, and there are other things I might, you know, might get excited about something, but it's not joy, that, that inner joy. Uh, peace, I like the way it describes patience. I've, I've actually, I'm still learning this. I don't know, maybe everyone else has already learned this, but uh, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. Um, I, I can wait on God, that's not a problem, but uh, my attitude uh, sometimes, especially in the past, was a struggle. I'd get all antsy and have anxiety and things. Uh, well, I'm I'm waiting on you, God. I'm being I'm being patient, um, but this puts it into another category. Not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. That's extremely important. And and thank God He's worked on me in this area. I've gotten a lot better because of Him working through me while I'm waiting on something from God, of uh, trusting Him and putting putting everything into Him and not being anxious. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Uh, now it says faithfulness in the Amplified and the original version says faith. Um, I, I do believe faith is a gift from God. We can't make ourselves believe. I believe that. Gentleness, uh, uh, self-control against such things, there are no law. So God has no law against producing his fruits. No law. So we can, we can produce, he can produce all those fruits in us that we want. And the more we walk in the spirit, the more fruit I believe is produced and uh, the, these things are part of what does not get burned up. Uh, even though God gives us all these things anyway, out of his mercy, he says, I've given you all these fruits, you presented them, they do not burn up in the fire because these are the things that I want you to have in your life. And we get rewarded for that. Isn't that amazing? It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Uh, I... <sighs> We, we've talked a lot about the concept of rewards, and uh, it's unfortunate some people teach there's really no reward system for right. believers. But uh, um, I don't know. I, I don't. I wouldn't criticize someone if they said that their motivation, their reason for wanting to work in ministry, is to build up treasures in heaven and earn rewards. Um, I, I, I wouldn't find any fault in that. But it's not my motivation. It's, it's the icing on the cake. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that I'm going to get some rewards, if possibly. But um, I, I do think whatever I do is just because I love Jesus. I want to talk about Jesus. I love the saints. I want to be around the saints. It's just um, that's where my desire is, not because I'm uh, motivated to, to earn the rewards. Um, heart for the lost, too. What's that? Heart for the lost. Yeah. Oh, you think I have a heart for the lost too? I didn't include that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, of course. Um, but uh, these, the fruits of the spirit. Uh, I wonder how many of these uh, each of us would identify and say, uh, "Yeah, I have this fruit." Um, and and what if a person doesn't have one of these or some of these? Uh, well, th does that indicate anything? Should we make any judgments uh, if we see some of these things missing, lacking in in us or others? Uh, love, uh, do I do I love as uh, fully as as the Lord wants me to? I I think I fall short of that. Joy and, and peace, I have. I think I, I excel at that. Thank you, Lord. I have joy and peace. I have it all the time. Of course, sometimes there's momentary problems and, and strife and discord and things like that. That when I have to deal with these things, it momentarily takes away my peace, but not my joy. Uh -huh. uh, my long suffering, patience. I thought that was interesting, Crips, how the, the uh, long suffering or patience was expressed in the Amplified. That was really beautiful, I think. Uh, let me look at it again. Yeah, uh, it's wrong when people use these as a checklist, you know? Yeah, the, fruit inspectors. Nobody, no, nobody walks in the spirit all the time. That's why Paul is constantly having to remind them hey, this is how you get victory, not through the law. But by walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, the the KJV has the term long suffering, but uh, today we would just use the word patience. Right. God is long suffering, or God is patient. 
and of course, we patience is a virtue that we want. Uh, but I used to pray for it uh, like many, many years ago. I'd say oh, 30 years ago, I was praying, Lord, give me patience. Yeah. But then I stopped praying for it because I thought, oh, oh, to get patience, am I going to have to go through uh, impatient trials? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I said, no, I don't really want patience at that at that cost. To have that to what builds patience is dealing with people that are difficult or having to wait for something a long time. Yeah. That builds yeah. patience. So if you want patience, God's going to put people that try your patience. That's the way it works. And well, that's we, why I, I confess I'm I'm I my patience is not what it should be, but I have purposely <laughs> didn't want it developed. Well, the same the same guy in Romans five said, uh, "Tribulation worketh patience, patience experience, and experience hope." That's that's the that's the way that it works, whether we like it or not. If we're praying for patience, uh, as you're saying, brother Luke, that's exactly uh, what we can we can count on. We can count on it anyway. There's going to be tribulation in this world if you're a believer. Absolutely. Yeah. But listen to how the Amplified uh, defines patience. It says, "Not the ability to wait." but how we act while waiting. That's profound to I me. Never, I never really thought of it like that. That is really profound, yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, long-suffering, gentleness. Okay, I'm basically pretty pretty gentle. I, I don't get uh, too aggressive. Uh, goodness. Uh, others will have to tell me how good they think I am. I can't judge myself on that. F faith. Uh, my, my faith is 100%. Uh, and faithfulness, if it's translated that way, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't know how faithful I am. I think I'm faithful, but a meekness. Now, meekness is uh, means it's power restraint under restraint. Mm -hmm. Meekness doesn't mean you're weak. It means that you're restraining yourself. And so I've uh, I've been pretty good in my life at restraining myself. Well, there are many times where um, the situation is a very tempting to uh, uh, exert some kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, wrath or anger against something, and, and, and I've restrained myself. Uh, temperance. Now, what is temperance? Uh, I think it's an even keel. Uh, like, uh, an even keel? Even uh, keel? Even keel, like we would call somebody mellow. They handle everything just kind of no, huh? Well, yeah, she's right. She's absolutely right. And uh, also the, the term like I lost my temper. That's oh okay. That's temperance. So you if you lose your temper, you're not being temperate. You're you're losing it. So if you're keeping your temper, that that's temperance. Mm hmm Okay. That's good. Uh uh, well, yeah, I don't lose my temper that often, but for my wife and I used to have a blowout at least once a month uh, to blow off our steam, but we even got too old and tired to do that anymore. So we, we, don't, tired. Our we don't even lose tired, our you? Each other anymore. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I think that's uh, all of the different, uh, the fruits of the spirit. Uh, now the question I have for everybody is uh, uh, how do you rate in these, in these uh, fruits? Uh, do you have them all? Are we supposed to have them all? Do, is it necessary? If someone is lacking something, should we make any uh, conclusions uh, regarding that? What do you think? Well, people do. People do. They're, they're fruit inspectors. They, they take this and they think, oh, well, Brother Bill doesn't, I keep using the name Bill. I'll use a different name. So well, I don't know if we have any Bills in the chat. But let's say, uh, let's say Art, because I know we don't have any Arts in the chat. So Art is someone's inspecting the fruit of art. Art claims to be a believer, and they they notice that he's often losing his temper. He's not gentle. You know, there's there there are several things that if you're looking close enough at someone, you can see these things, and then you could just make a determination. Uh, well, the, they're not saved, or uh, uh, they're they're false prophet. They're this. They're that. We can look at someone else and do that. I don't think we should be doing that. Again, the only person that knows truly knows someone's heart is God. Uh, we can think that we know someone. We can think that we know um, all their intents and things like that. Uh, but I find that uh, problematic. We shouldn't be looking at other people and trying by their just by their fruit. And then there's the other verse, and Renee, maybe you can help me with that. The the verse that's actually about false prophets. You'll know them by their fruit, right? So people 
take yeah. that one and they add it on to this one. Yeah, that's ridiculous because right. that verse says that they are wolves in sheep's clothing. So they look like righteous religious men, but the fruit is their words because out of the heart, uh, out of out of the evil heart, a man speaks. Mm -hmm. So they should know not to. That makes me mad when they do that. I'm like, what what fruit are you looking for? They're looking. It, it is a way to judge. It just it's so it makes my skin crawl when people take those verses out of context like yeah. that. Ray Comfort does that. Yep. And by the fruits, you'll know them. Fruits of holiness, fruits of this, fruits of <laughs> listing stuff that's not even said in scripture. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I just looked at the clock and I had completely lost track of time. So we are good. Yeah, it, it is good, I guess, yeah. Uh, unless you're on a schedule, but uh, yeah. I, I guess this is a, a, a good point for us to uh, drop uh, drop off anyway, since we covered all of these uh, fruits of the spirit. Um, so uh, let's start giving our, our uh, summary remarks here. Uh, Brother Cripps? Thank you. Yeah, this was great. Uh, it's a great chapter. Um, like I said, I'd made the mistake of for some reason I thought that we had already finished. I thought we were going to be starting Ephesians start. So I, I was way off there. So my apologies for that. Um, but I'm glad that we uh, have this uh, six, uh, chapter six to go over. There's a lot of things that are timely, a lot of stuff going on uh, in these areas today. Uh, and so for me, I find, find it comforting to read these words from Paul uh, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And I'm challenged uh, to uh, do more work and try to step out of my flesh the times that I get into that and continue to walk in the Spirit. I hope and encourages everyone else to do so. Uh, I'm excited about finishing up this chapter and then moving on to Ephesians, but there's still some verses left. So uh, I guess next time uh, we'll finish up and then we'll we'll get into Ephesians. So I'm um, very excited about that as well. I like new chapters, new fresh chapters, but this is, I'm, I, I'm gonna miss, I'm gonna miss this, uh, this book. This is great. Um, and I appreciate being allowed to be part of the panel. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, brother. All right. Uh, brother Cripps, give us your summary, please. I mean, brother Cripps, uh, brother, brother Ben. <laughs> oh, I thought it was another great uh, study. Uh, I wasn't able to pay attention to much as I wanted to, because there were some comments. Uh, some individuals can't let, let bygones by be bygones of the past be the past, then accept decisions that were made by uh, a committee and, um, it's just said that we, we that, that has to keep on coming up. Uh, why not just accept it and move forward? That's I think what we all want to do. Um, but other than that, uh, what I did catch it was it was uh, awesome, great comments. Especially Luke, I like what you said uh, about the you can your mind can only occupy one thing at a time. So if you're if you are tempted to sin, it, it's just a matter of setting your mind on the things of the spirit, and immediately your your whole uh, your whole being is is transported into into the spirit and um you you will not have you will not experience those those fleshly temptations i know it's not easy it's easier said than done i'm not telling you it's easy uh but over time i've learned uh, that that definitely is the case so i thought that was excellent all right thank you um well as far as easier said than done i i i really do think that uh it's as easy as that uh it's just a question of, first of all a person needs to be aware all I need to do is just call on the name of the Lord. Just think about Jesus and the, the, the sin desires go away because I'm thinking about Jesus instead. And just we need to realize that this is our way out and uh, then employ it. Now understand that this is what we're supposed to do. Focus on Jesus. And now that you realize that's the cure, just practice it. And, and you'll find out that it is as easy as said as done, whatever, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, what I meant by that is it took, it took a while. I think what I meant by that was uh, it took it took me a while to learn that. Uh, it, yes, it is easy, uh, but it took me a while to learn that. Uh, maybe it comes quicker to others, but well, that's the law mentality. You mo we want to focus more on law, and it only strengthens sin. But when you abide in God's grace and Jesus is your focus and His love for you, it doesn't strengthen sin. It gets your focus back. But that is the the way law works, you know, our, our carnal mind thinks 
the way to overcome these temptations is to focus on the do not, we're not supposed to do that. Thou shalt not. God says no. But that's not the way to, to, to get victory over it. It's to say, I am free, but who am I in Christ? That's not who I am. And to know that Jesus lives in me and is with me everywhere I go. Anything I put before my eyes, Jesus is sitting here with me. And I have to remember that. You know, and I always have to remember God loves people. And if, if I'm hurting them, it hurts his heart. So that's what keeps me in my mind. You know what I'm saying? Like I can get in my flesh. I get a lot of people attacking me, you know, accusing me. And and it's it's hard not to get in my flesh ever. But one of one of the things we we can do is to always remember he's with us and always keep like you said brother luke all of you said keep your eyes on jesus but i'm glad this chapter goes over one of these sin lists because a lot of false teachers like to use these sin lists to condemn or to judge and all this is doing is saying hey if you're someone that's walking in your flesh these are the things you'll desire and these are the things you will manifest and if you're walking in the spirit these are the things that you will desire and manifest. It's just showing us the two different ways. But I think the point of this chapter is there is no purpose of the law in the new covenant. Because if you're walking in the spirit, you'll manifest these things. We don't have a law against them. There's, there's no need for a thou shalt not because you're going to know who thou shalt be. You know, you're going to you are if you're walking in the spirit and you're not those things you're not a drunk you're not a whoremonger you're not an idolater so i'm glad we uh you know got to a section with the sin list because mm -hmm. i think one in which one ben is is it first or second corinthians the famous sin list and another one in romans maybe yeah there's one in ephesians and i think uh, first corinthians six there you go that's yep that's the one that that's the big one they use yeah. So yeah, I really like this study. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. I guess everybody's give their summary uh, except me. Uh, the uh, we we're almost done with this chapter. If we if I was paying more attention, we probably could have figured out how to complete this chapter tonight. But we'll pick up uh, where we left off next time, and then we'll be in chapter six. Um, so we we've all I think agreed that. Um, Galatians is one of the favorite and most important books of the Bible. And uh, so it's been a great study all the way along. Um, but obviously, the Galatians is such an important book because it, it not only tells us that uh, you cannot mix uh, uh, faith and works together and that it's it got to be, uh, you got to leave out the, the law completely. Uh, and uh, that if there are believers who get led astray into the Judaism, uh, into believing in Jesus, now thinking that they got to practice Judaism too, or in today it's it's the, someone who believes in Jesus and gets saved, and now they they used to get uh, fall into legalism and lordship because they didn't know any better. And so I think that this book is very important uh, for those points. There, these are. These are probably the biggest problems in Christendom. Christendom is not Christianity. Christendom means everybody in the world who identifies themselves as some kind of a Christian. Out of all those people, I don't think more than 10% of them believe uh, in the Christianity that we believe in the Bible. Uh, most, most all of them believe in Jesus plus some kind of religious works. Yep. Uh, so, uh, and then the fact that some people um, and believe and then go astray into apostasy. Uh, this is a fact that we have to accept that there are people that that's what happens. Uh, I've known many people who've gone through this. Uh, that's what this entire book is about. So I think we need to be aware that this problem does exist. Um, all right. Anything else from anybody before we say good night? Well, I would say if people could go apostate, then that that would suggest that that, that faith is the faith is not a gift of God because God I mean, God does does not fail. But, what? All right. 
Oh, my Thursday. My Thursday thing. It's just open topic tomorrow with Brother Dave and Lisa uh, tomorrow on the third hour. I don't know what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. Mm-hmm. 9 p.m. 9 p.m. on Renee Rowland Channel. Be there or beware. And then uh, join us Friday night for Fun Fellowship Friday night on this same channel, Church of the Eternally Secure, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you, everybody, for participating tonight. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior, God, Jesus.